Isn't it strange how God's miraculous abilities are so intertwined with our capacity to measure those miracles? You know, I'm, I'm taking a renewed interest in British history, because let's face it, if you're an atheist activist, few things are going to keep you motivated more than the history of the post-Roman occupation British Isles. And as I look into it, I can't help but notice how common it used to be for saints to heal blind people. Happened all the time, apparently. It seemed like any saint that was worth their salt had renewed at least one person's sight. A lot of deafness, too, and uh, lameness healing back then. It makes you wonder if healing powers are like doing backflips on a trampoline. You know, when God was a little younger, sure, but now, what are you fucking kidding me? Now, that's not to say that God isn't performing miracles at all anymore. You know, once in a while, he'll juggle the sun for some Portuguese people or something. But mostly, he just cures diseases that go into spontaneous remission without him sometimes. Now, think about what a wonderful weapon the cognitive dissonance here is. Back in late antiquity, they had diseases like that, too, the ones that God cures these days. You know, diseases that you could sometimes get better from, but nobody tells stories about saints miraculously curing that shit. They stick to that other class of maladies like blindness and deafness and leprosy. So when did God stop curing incurable stuff? Well, that depends on where in the world you were. Essentially, he stopped doing that whenever your area got modern medical records. The last miraculous blindness curing in every region happened right before that region started accurately tracking who was and wasn't blind. And from that point on, God started specializing exclusively in diseases that you can get better from, and accidents that aren't necessarily life-threatening, and parking spaces. And even a cursory look at the history of the fucking religion betrays this. It's not like God has always been this lame. He's exactly as awesome and as powerful as he can be without passing any tests. And he, he, and he always has been throughout all of history. As the test gets better, God gets lamer. All the river-parting prophets dry up as soon as we have multiple attestations of history. All the unambiguous signs of divinity disappear as soon as we develop photography. And all the blind people stay blind when we start keeping records. Now, this is not a subtle problem here. This is as glaring a problem as a worldview can possibly have. If your definitions are in need of wholesale adjustment every time we learn new stuff, your worldview is clearly bullshit. And religious people don't need me to tell them that. In fact, they need somebody else to tell them the exact opposite once a week on Sunday and possibly again on Wednesday. They need a grown human being standing up in front of them saying this shit is true out loud or it would be impossible to keep pretending that they believed it. You know, when a Christian looks at these medieval accounts of saints curing the blind and stuff, you know, accounts with at least as much attention to historical detail as the biblical accounts, what do they think of them? How do they reconcile this? Do, do they assume that these stories are fabrications or exaggerations? And if they think that, how do you avoid thinking the same thing about all the Jesus stuff? Or do they think, shucks, I wonder why God stopped curing blind people through saints? Do they, do they write it off as the deific equivalent of cargo shorts that just went out of style one day? Or, or maybe they think that God still does cure blind people through saints and the ivory tower scientific elite hide those stories in some grand satanic conspiracy they have. So, you know, okay, let's give some Christians some credit here. Let's set aside all the insultingly stupid answers that you could have for this question and the truth. And let's ask ourselves, how could you possibly reconcile it? You've got a world that completely rests on the authenticity of unreliable historical fables, and when you look at those fables, you see the power of God forever shrinking to come in under the bar of the most impressive thing I can do that nobody can invalidate. Now, my guess is that they retreat to the free will argument here, but even that takes a healthy dose of compartmentalization. The argument here would be, well, God wants you to have the choice to believe in him or deny him, so he can't do unambiguous miracles live on CNN, obviously. And they say stuff like this so often that the bizarre lunacy behind it doesn't even occur to them. So God wants to be mysterious more than he wants to cure blind people? All right, I, I don't know why you'd want to worship that fuck, but then why the hell would he have ever done miracles at all? You know, why does he care so much more about your free will than Ezekiel's or Jeremiah's or Elijah's or all the people alive in Mosaic-era Egypt? Revealing himself to some people and not others is kind of a dick move when heaven and hell lie in the balance, isn't it? And why is he so concerned that we have the free will to believe in or reject him, but he doesn't feel that way about all the other things? He doesn't give us that option with, like, gravity or heat or elephants or gut bacteria or genital warts or anything else, but for some reason the most important thing we could possibly know has to be a fucking enigma. You know, we think a lot about the conflict between religion and science these days. And, and, you know, how could we not? Science is very important. It's the thing that cures our diseases and brings us our email and stuff. But it's important not to lose track of the fact that religion isn't just opposed to science. They're opposed to knowledge. 
Given a chance, they're going to go after science, history, philosophy, literature, basically anything where the truth might be hiding. And if you don't believe me, look at all the times and places in history where religion ever had the power to do that and then find the one where they didn't. You know, look, you can't be an ally of truth without being an enemy of religion. The religious people won't let you, but more importantly, the truth won't let you either. 